and Dracula. Today's video is about the 1815 eruption of Mount Tambora in Indonesia and its later effects afterwards. The eruption was the world's largest in recorded human history. 1,600 miles away in Sumatra, they heard the explosion. To them, they thought it was gunfire and they prepared for a battle that was never going to come. And to represent this eruption, I've gone all sixth grade science fair and I've created a plaster mold. And I guess together we're going to... We're going to set off a little eruption. Oh, look at all this. This is a science channel now. <laughs> who's, who's a science guy now? Okay. So we have our eruption powder already in here. Okay. I don't know how this is going to go, to be honest. I've never done this before. It might be spectacular. It might be trash. <laughs> Look at that! Look at it! Oh! Oh! Woohoo! Woohoo! Oh, it smells like Easter! Oh my gosh! Oh, wonderful! Wonderful! <laughs> oh! Look at that! Look at it fizz and foam! Oh, I'm like a kid in a candy store. We're gonna just set this off to the side over here. Just kind of kick that onto the floor almost. That fully off screen. <laughs> wonderful! Wonderful. Well, that was that was a lot of fun. So, as I said, the explosion was the largest volcanic eruption in recorded human history. And the amount of particles, the ash, the volcanic ash, and the dust, and little bits of rocks that were in the atmosphere after this were at a record high. There was eruptions before this, and this was the big one, so the atmosphere was full of these particles and dust. So it affected the weather. In Asia, we had record flooding. The monsoon season was interrupted. They had snow in the summer. Things weren't great. Plants were dying. Uh, then the monsoon season resumed when it shouldn't happen. And then we had extra flooding when people didn't expect it. They didn't know what was going on. In Europe, it was arguably worse. You had these terrible weather. So in the summer, we had, in June, frost, prolonged frost. We had snow. This killed off your main crops, your grains. Fruits and vegetables, they were okay. But your main crops, your grains, your backbone of food were destroyed and mostly dead. So people were starting to starve. There was widespread famine and in France, riots because of this. We had even weirder weather in places like Switzerland and Italy. We had red and brown snow because of the volcanic ash in the sky. There was a typhus outbreak that killed 65,000. And a lot of experts say it was made worse because of the malnourishment because of the famine. Things weren't great in Europe. And they were even maybe worse in America, particularly the Northeast end of the United States. There was this heavy fog that was in the air. God, that vinegar smells. There's this heavy fog that was in the air, and it wouldn't dissipate. Rain, sun, shine, storm, the fog was there. And the fog was wreaking havoc because less sunlight was getting through. This was the year without a summer. The eruption was in 1815. The summer of 1816 is when all this takes place. There's really not enough light getting through. And because of that, there's extra rain, and things are very cold. So we had record low temperatures from 1677 to 2000. This was the coldest year on record because of this volcano. In America, more crops dying. People are dying of starvation, a famine. It's a mess. You have weird weather. In Virginia, you had brown and red snow because of the volcanic ash, sometimes yellow and even blue snow. It was a mess. A woman in a diary in Maryland writes, simply weather backwards. Things were weird. People were dying the sun wasn't penetrating the atmosphere as it normally should. There was also a take on literature and art. This is kind of what excites me the most. In art, because of the volcanic ash in the sky, the sunsets were honestly very beautiful. They were deep red, and you could see it in the art of the time. I'll have that right here. The literature is what also fascinates me. In Lake Geneva, in Switzerland, four famous authors of the time were on a summer retreat. We had Mary Shelley, Percy Shelley, Lord Byron, and John Polidori, and a few of their friends. They're on summer retreat, but it's the year without a summer. There isn't enough sunlight coming through. It's dark, it's rainy, it's cold. Okay, they're not enjoying themselves. And also just 
kind of partying. Lord Byron was famous for that. So they're doing opium, they're partying, they're getting a little weird. They're reading ghost stories. And one day Lord Byron remarks when they have to light the candles at noon instead of night that this is pretty creepy. And how about after reading these scary stories and after doing a lot of opium, then why don't we have, us authors, have a spooky story competition, okay? They wanna make the scariest story possible. Lord Byron comes out first and he writes a fragment. Well, I mean, it's not, it's not just a fragment. It's more than just like a part of a sentence. It's called a fragment, okay? He writes a fragment and John Polidori is gonna use that as inspiration to create his work, The Vampire. I'm saying it this way because it's V-A-M-P-Y-R, V-A-M-P-Y-R. It's the first modern tale of published story with a vampire in it. It's a precursor to Dracula. It's the first vampire story because of this night, or because of this summer even. Lord Byron also puts out Darkness. Darkness is a very long poem and it details a world without light. It's inspired by the world he's living in, the darkness around him. He describes the day would begin, but the sun would not rise. The men would burn their houses and anything they owned just to have light, to see each other's face one last time. The darkness was making them insane. And this is in somewhat inspired by what they're going through, what the world's going through at this time. Mary Shelley, she has this creepy opium-filled dream and we get probably the most famous work as a result of this. She has this opium-filled dream of a mad scientist looking down at a body on a table and she wakes up and she thinks of her idea of a mad scientist who takes parts of bodies and forms them together to create life. She calls her tale a modern Prometheus. But we would know it today as simply Frankenstein. We had a volcanic eruption halfway across the world that caused some death in its initial blast, death via famine, death via weird weather. We had unpredictable weather, we had snowing in the summer. We had a year without a summer. We had vibrant sunshines depicted in art. And my favorite bit on Fun Bits About is the creation of two of the biggest monsters, okay? We had, one second. We had Frankenstein's monster himself and Dracula. <laughs> These are just some fun bits. Volcano caused weird weather, creates two of the best monsters, I believe, if you look at the set. This has been Fun Bits About. I want you to like the video, share it, subscribe, hit the bell icon, do whatever you want. As I mentioned, it's spooky season. I took on the Reaper last week. We talked about a volcano that had no light and we got Frankenstein. What's next week gonna come? Stay tuned. Have a great day.